hands or simply answer my poem and friends and you're watching the factory TV. Sensing the pain from a distance that we created a space where my taste buds water for the for the sweet neglect listens to the acceptance of the pain we left each other in all because we are in need of each other's everlasting presence needing to embrace a space within each other that may be better off let out the drive maybe better off getting closure setting us on hell's doorstep but our minds act like narrow hallways too squeeze to unleash the pressure we are in, too narrow the door our mind wanders that each other walks towards, but we are greedy for each other's time, needy for each uh. other's prime, begging each other to feed me, need me all so I don't go hungry for your love, but Come on. closed doors don't, be don't belong behind open minds. <laughs> yeah, yeah. Hey guys, this is the Faxi TV and I'm here with one of our first features, Anthony. You're, you go by Ant? I do go by Ant. Is, uh, your, is that your stage name? No, my stage name is actually Simply Ant. Your full name for the record? My name is Anthony Harris. Uh, and what's your, your hometown? I am from Colleen, Texas. Colleen? Colleen? Colleen. Colleen, Texas. Mm -hmm. so tell me about Colleen. Uh, it's a small, small town nestled kind of in the middle of central Texas. A little bit rough around the edges over there. Uh, it's really known for Fort Hood. There's a big army post out there, but you know the people from Colleen make Colleen. So that's where I'm from. That's why I'm a little bit rough around the edges. So jumping right into it, uh, COVID-19. How has that affected you and your family? Uh, a lot. When I'm at work, I have Are to wear vests. I am, so I'm, I'm, I'm mission essential. So um, I, I go into work, I so. Like <laughs> Mission A, it's mission essential. essential, yeah, Your mission, mission essential, <laughs> right. You know, we got to wear our masks, you know, we go to stores, you know, we wear masks. Social distance is a big thing that I tell my, I tell my guys, you know, I, most of my, most of the people that work up under me, they're off, you know, they're not mission essential and whatnot. So I just tell them to, you know, practice, you know, practice social distance, make sure you doing what, doing what's the best precaution that's getting put out there right now. Um, it's been a, I mean, it's been, it's been a whirlwind for everybody. You know, I think that, what I do think COVID did, um, it gave people time to kind of just slow down and really just take a take a look at, at their lives. You know, being that I'm in the military, um, I was supposed to supposed to leave here beginning of April time frame. It's pushed me out to around September, October time frame. With family wise, you know, I, my kids, uh, they live with their mom out in Texas. I'm supposed to get my kids for the summer, you know, so I mean, I get them for the holidays, which is still which is still fine. And, uh, they plan to come out here for about a week in July. So tell me about your kids. Uh, my kids, yeah. So Yasmin is my oldest. She's 12, about to be 13. My son, Anthony II, uh, he's eight and about to be nine. And my youngest, Malaya, she is seven. Uh, born in April, so she just turned seven last month, my birthday month. Um, so I, I really want to get in depth, you know, and like really talk about you and, uh, and learn your story. Um, about that, yeah. So let's, let's <clears throat> talk about your ex and um, what, what happened there. You seem like this very uh, 
put together person, mm -hmm. uh, very family oriented. Mm -hmm. So, um, what went wrong? Um, there's a lot. So, you know, I met her when I was fairly young, you know, so she's, um, she's older than me. So I met her when I was, I'm 32. So she was, I was 20. Uh, when I met her, she was 27, 27, 28. Uh, off top is already a different dynamic, right? So, you know, I'm, I'm younger and my mindset is way younger, you, you know? Like older women, Anthony? I do like older women. I don't say I discriminate, but I, you know, I've tended to go towards older women. So, okay, uh, you know, so dynamic already, you know, she's older, I'm younger. And, you know, by the time I met her, you know, she was already pretty much established in her life. Um, doing her own thing. I'm young, so I'm I'm out in the street. You know yeah. what? Yeah, what they say today. You know, he was for the streets. You know, so I, yeah, yeah. I, I I was hot in the pants. You know, I'm running around doing, you know, doing my thing. You know, really. And you know, when we what started, uh, just dealing with multiple women. You know, um, wanting to be out and about party with my life. friends. Party life. You know, on top of that too. You know, I um, travel basketball was something I did too. So when I'm in different cities doing my thing. And, you know, it's one of those things to where, you know, as a woman, you know, you expect that the person you're dealing with or, you know, your your baby's father, or, you know, your boyfriend, whatever we was at the time frame, that he's going to be there, you know, we're not in me still being young. Mm -hmm. um, I th ultimately, what I think it was, was, you know, um, I do think that me being a man or just an individual period, you know, everybody needs their own individuality and yeah. needs their own space to kind of just do things and whatever and but for my daughters specifically i didn't want my daughters to grow up and think that that's how a man is supposed to treat their mom you know or treat a woman right like you we don't even realize uh that some of the tendencies we have is because of how we were treated as right children, you know what I mean? um and then even for my son you know um same same principle you know i just didn't want him to grow up and think that you know a man is supposed to treat a woman like this you know my biggest i think my biggest job in this world you know is raising him to be a, a man like i feel like it's a title that you know we use loosely throw around loosely really but you know it's a, it's really a thing to be a man in this world and i got to raise him to be a productive citizen you know, and that actually brings up an important question what is a, what is a man to you Anthony? um somebody who stands on his own too um somebody who is not scared to admit when he's wrong uh somebody who can provide you know can protect um and at the end of the day, uh, just be the just be the backbone of of yourself, of your family. Um, we hear we hear phrases all the time like "men don't cry" or "man mm. up" and stuff like that. So um, it's funny uh, you brought that up. So actually, in my in my book, you know, I kind of talked about that, and I actually talked about it in one of my other podcasts I did. That a lot of us, even me growing up, um, I was raised that way. You know, to where men don't cry. We don't show emotions, you know, is it's backwards, you know, because a lot of times we hold on to stuff so much um, that we just blow up, you know, we just blow up or we don't know how to deal with other people because of everything else that we got going on. Um, and coincidentally enough, my son, he's very emotional, you know, very emotional um, little boy. And like I tell him all the time, you know, there's nothing wrong with that. You know, if you got to cry, cry, you know, if you if you feel some type of way, speak on it, you know, and. You know, we got to take care of ourselves first. If you can't get yourself together first, you can't properly take care of anything or anybody. You have to take care of yourself internally first. So, mm -hmm. so I think that's really important to understand. Um, my, I have a psychologist. I see a psychologist. Okay. Um, for some of the same uh, things, like I, um, I actually had anger issues myself. So he, one of the things that really stuck with me was this one thing that he said, which was expectations breed resentment. Mm -hmm. So let me hear your thoughts on that. I think it's, I think it's a good way to put, once again, if you're not speaking on what you're going through, like I think people, a lot of people wanna, wanna put on a facade that they're very strong. You know, what not, what happens is when we don't speak on our emotions or our feelings or whatever, and people keep on doing it, then we, yeah, we do end up resenting everybody else because we don't feel like we could talk to them. I don't think it'd be so much of an issue and I don't think that statement would be so accurate if we were, to be able to really speak on what we what, what we feel and what we yeah, got going on so I totally feel you yeah. because it's like you we wouldn't have these expectations if we if we were honest about what we right. felt right exactly space, exactly you know I mean? exactly so that's that's a really good insight yeah okay 
So those are really good warm-up questions. Uh, so we're, uh, these are some questions that we came up with as a, as a team. And uh, we're interested to know what uh, inspires you to be heard. So I think you said it really well um, early in the first little video you, you sent me. Um, writing kind of just gave me an avenue to kind of just to put it all on pen, you know, put it on paper. And I think most of my stuff that I write, it comes from a place that I've, I've actually been, you know, so uh, and because I know I've been there, I know other people have been there, too. And other people can be like me to where they don't they don't really speak on their, their, their feelings. They don't they don't really know how to um, properly get their stuff out without seeming angry or seeming mad or or, or what not. And is that such a bad thing? It depends. You know, uh, I do think there's a proper way to 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 show your feelings but i also feel like you know it depends on your your audience so you have to know who you're dealing with right so um i have to know the capacity that somebody can deal with my passion mm -hmm. you know so if i just because i'm loud just because i get loud or you know i get emotional it, right exactly <laughs> you know so it was really just understanding you know your audience and whatnot and i think that's really on us understanding the people that we're friends with or that we're closest with on um, the people that we're in relationships with and whatnot right. Um, because uh, spitting a controversial poem to, uh, to your following isn't the same as, as spitting right. to a crowd of people you don't know. Absolutely, you know I mean? absolutely. So that's and that's, a, and that's a, and I think within poetry, you know, that's a, that's a comfort level you have to find within yourself, you know, too, because um, sometimes when we do, as poets, write stuff and spit stuff, um, it's not always going to be, you know, to everybody's, you know, liking, liking you know, and... Um, but poetry in itself is not necessarily to be to everybody's <laughs> liking, yeah. you know. And I think I think people do get that confused sometimes, you know. So, um, you know, what, what is true to me and what I what I want to spit, you know, Black History Month. If I go out there and like I did, you know, um, I want to spit a, a Black History poem um, called "You Were Made for This." Um, there might be other people in my in, in my audience who, number one, they don't relate, you know, because they're not black, you know, or number two, they. They haven't been through a lot of the struggles I've been through, and some of the things I say may feel controversial to them. You know, that doesn't bother me at all. You know, because I know why I wrote it and who I'm talking to right now. You know, um, and the fact that you, whoever's in the audience, if you sat there and listened to it though, you know, I applaud them for that too. You know, you know, sometimes it does get uncomfortable. You know, and I think that even us, if I'm in the audience as a poet and somebody spits something that might be uncomfortable to me, you know, I got to understand that, you know, they might not be talking directly to me, but they're talking about their experiences and I can't get mad at their experience or what they feel or what they're going through. Um, they had the courage to pin that to paper and come out here to a whole audience and spill what they felt, you know, and that's, and it, that's art and, I mean, you get, you, I feel like you gotta applaud everybody who does them. It's, it's not it's not easy all the time. There so are, there are, there are times to this day that I my knees shake. Of course, yeah. uh, stage fright is something that holds people back from performing ever. Right. You know what I mean. So and it's like I feel like it's important for especially our viewers to hear something like that that we go through that. Right. Too. Absolutely. You know I mean? Like all the time. Absolutely. You know, I, 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 I was I was blessed in the sense that you know my my parents. They never talk down on each other, you know. Yeah. Like um, they, me and my little brother was very fortunate in that. Is all that we knew that they didn't really have a relationship and they wasn't like friends, or whatever. They didn't. They did what they could not to bring that to us, you know. Uh, we kind of built our own, you know, whatever. And me and my dad, and just how I how I was, how I am to to a certain extent now, but how I was for sure, you know. You know, I just was against a lot of stuff he was talking about, you know. And the thing is, honestly speaking, if I can be if I could be blunt, you know, you know, I have a I have a very I have a very photographic memory, you know, so like um you know, for his even though me and my dad have a pretty good relationship right now, it's a lot better than it was, you know. Um, you know, I still remember things from when I was younger, this, you know. And that was tough for me growing up trying to deal with him. And really it festered for a long time. We had our little pockets where we were good and then most times we weren't. And really, it wasn't until I had my son, so I had my son to where I remember I held my son first day he was born. And I was like, damn, you know, with all my kids, I couldn't deal with, you know, them growing up and not want to deal with me. But with my son, just because I know it could relate to my dad, he got all boys, you know, me and my two brothers. I was like, you know, I don't know what I would do if my son ever just grew up and was like, I just don't fuck with you. Like, 
for me, number one, my kids deserve to have grandparents. You know, both my parents are still here, you know, so they deserve to have a relationship with their, their grandparents. For me to make that happen, I have to be right with my parents though. Like, my kids can have great relationships with my parents if I don't, you know, because they ain't yeah. never gonna, you know, whatever. So I had to fix that, you know, and I had to fix that with him, I had to fix that with my stepmom. And um, I had to man up in my own sense and be like, you know, what, what happened in the past with him and my mom or whatever they went through and me and his issues, you know, really a lot of it had nothing to do with him, you know, it had a lot to do with me. And even the stuff that had to do with him and my mom, I mean, that was their relationship. I mean, I don't, I don't condone certain actions or whatever, but at the end of the day, my mom is great, you know? I mean, obviously it was so long ago, my mom came out of that situation awesome, thriving, you know, hit a new chapter in her life and moved on from that and um, did very well for herself. So um, both of them, both my parents did, done very well for themselves. So, you know, I, you know, I had- People do change. Yeah, people, I, I believe so, you know, I believe so. Besides my little flash memories of things that I have, you know, um, I do know that he's always, he's always been there to try to be a father for me, you know, so in any way I've needed it um, and I can't be mad That's at him. Something. Yeah, I yeah. can't be mad at him for that, so. Um, but I think it's to answer your question, I apologize. No. Um, I don't know that my writing and what I write about, I was inspired by a lot of people. I think a lot of my inspiration comes from the situations I've dealt with, you know? So um, I, a lot of times I write about things that happen. So like, you know, when I write about, you know, my mom, you know, comes from issues with my mom. When I write about, um, you know, certain, black things that go on in society it comes from things that's going on right now you know i write about my kids the same instance when i write when i wrote i'm not a poet that i quoted you know it was legit i had a feature somewhere in florida and this dude came up to me and was like hey do you consider yourself a poet i got to know where i was kind of like you know yeah like why he was like well how many poetry slams have you won and then i thought i was like does that really define what's a poet you know so i wrote a poem called i'm not a poet you know so it's you know i don't I guess that it, yeah, I guess that's, I guess that's inspiration, you know, but I don't think it's came from any particular person, you know, a lot of my stuff just comes from situations and because it helps me get off my chest, whatever I need to get off my chest, you know, at that yeah. particular time. So if I go through something at work today, you know, I might come home and decide I want to start writing a dang poem, you know, cause. Yeah. Um, so stylistically, do you think that you emanate anyone? No. 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 So you're being authentic. Yeah, it's, it, it's really, and, and, that that's where my stage name came from honestly like simply ant like it's it's just me like when people when you read my book um especially am i really because it's an actual book it's not a not, not my poems you know um i wrote it how i speak so even i tell people i was like i didn't read the book until after i released it you know and um i released it and you know what i tell people was you know i even me going back and reading it now sometimes i cringe you know about certain you know little little words that I misspelled or that I, you know, I missed a word here or, you know, whatever. But what I told people was I wanted it to feel like it was authentically me, you know? So when people read it, they can, they, people, especially people who know me, they know that's how I talk, you know, that's, that's, that's who I am. You know, I'm not trying to put it aside. I'm not a, I don't consider myself this author, this whatever. Mm -hmm. um, when I wrote that book, it was, it was for a message, but I wanted them to hear it from me and how I speak and um, where I'm coming from. And that's how I was delivered. And I think that's why people appreciated it. You know, really. Uh, so. I really like how it's presented. Yeah. So. Yeah. So I had um, Shy pick out a few um, passages that uh, that struck her. Is this the the bookmarks? Um, and just so that we could talk about it. Awesome. Make it a priority to always put you first. There's a reason that when we are on an airline and listen to the safety brief that they tell that they tell us in case of an emergency. Place the mask over your face first before others. Being individually good allows you to be good for everyone else. Whether that is being a good friend, a good coworker, or good parent, you taking care of yourself is the catalyst. So what, what do you mean to say uh, in this passage for your readers? In layman's terms, I guess I would. It goes back to what I said earlier. You know, you have to, you have to focus on yourself first. You, you have to be the most important person in your life, you know, and I think that's hard for some people because we have other things and we got kids, you know, we got, you know, our sickly parents or our grandparents. When I, so, you know, inherently it's like, no, I want to, they got to be my number one priority, but you can't properly or efficiently for over a sustained period of time anyway, 
put them first if you're not good within yourself something's gonna fall off you know you're not you're gonna miss something you're not gonna do something well you know you're just gonna gloss out one day you know because you're not taking care of you so you have to be the best version of you first so you can do for whatever for anybody else you know and that goes with like you know people throwing stressful situations at you people um they're just throwing everything at you if you can't take care of you first there's no way you could take on everybody else's burdens and everything else is going on in life um that drives people crazy you know that honestly speaking that's that's a lot of reason why people commit suicide and stuff like that you know because they don't know they don't have an avenue to 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 get their stuff off and they don't you know so they just hold it and hold it and hold it until it's overwhelmingly too much and that's taking care of yourself individually you know and i know suicide's a extreme way to push stuff but I mean, well, that's it, how it, you look at it as like, what are yeah. the extremes? Of right, you know, that, exa- you know you exactly. That's a, that's a real thing. You know, people people drive themselves crazy trying to make sure everything, everybody else is good because they're not good. And that's, how, that's why they drive themselves crazy because yeah. they're not straight, you know. And um, that's why one of my readers understand that, you know, you got to be you got to be 100 percent good within yourself, you know, and it's OK not to be, you know, you just have to identify that you're not and figure out a way to to get to that point to where, you know, you're good. You know, you know, this is how I fix it. This is what I need to do. And let me work on myself first before I start trying to take on everything else. And if people around you can't understand that you got to fix yourself, then you need to re, you know, re, rethink who's who's in your circles and stuff like that. You know, so. I'm I'm good at kind of just self addressing what I what I got going on at this point in my life, though. So. I know when I'm getting to a point to where I'm overwhelmed. What I tell people too, because some people really just don't know that they're overwhelmed, like you yeah. know. And um, but I tell people to really listen to the people that is closest to you too, because a lot of times your friends, your family will tell you like, "Hey, you good? Like you off? You know, right now, whatever." And you should really listen to that. Most people don't just say it just to be talking. You know, they they say it coming from a a place like they they see you off you know your coworkers, your friends whatever and if you off you might be off you know and it's, it's a good thing it's, that's a good time just to go back and look at all right you know let me let Hashtag me see check yourself check yourself you know for real like check yourself and that's honest that's honest you got to be honest with yourself first and foremost so yeah so this uh, that's Ant's book the 10 keys to motivation am i really um anthony's a self-published uh, spoken word artist um, also a uh, motivational speaker with a lot of his um, you know, tips to self-care and self-motivation in these books. The next one we're going to talk about is uh, Care Package. Um, which one did you publish first? Am I really? So, uh, so, this, is the, so this is the one that I missed uh, that, you were, that you had just released um, when I met you. Uh, no, I actually just, I, I released Am I Really when you met me. Oh, wow. yeah. you've been busting Yeah, so head. Care Package just came out about a month and a half ago. Um, that's my first poetry book. Um, nice. Yeah, okay. so, so it's about then. love, lust, misguidance, and trust is like the topics of it. And I also brought on, um, you know, one of the things I try to do with any artist, I bring other people with me, you know, um, who might need an avenue or don't know how to put stuff out. So at the end of my book, um, somebody I know, uh, he, he actually does poetry as well too. So I made sure I gave him like about 12 or 13 little pages to get his poetry out there too. So that's nice. pretty awesome for him too. So, you, so you're looking, up, uh, looking out for the, uh, the up and comers too? Trying to, trying to. Well, that's how, that's uh, how you give back, you know what I mean? It's, uh, and I'm really big about that is uh, giving opportunities to, to people who uh, want to do what we do, but just right. haven't been provided an avenue. Right, absolutely. You know what I mean? Absolutely. So Shai chose this one. I'm interested. So I haven't, I haven't had anybody go and pick out a poem and say, yo, tell me about it. So. <laughs> <laughs> I love how uh, all, the, all the titles in this book are crossed out, by the way. Um, let's see if you can guess the title. The story goes, I heard he got a new girl and I was pissed. But then I saw her. The end. <laughs> 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 yeah, that's uh, what 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 was that one called? That was called was that over it. What was the one? Nah, this one? one was amused. Amused, <laughs> yeah, amused, yeah. So, um, yeah, so you know, I think you know a lot of times, especially 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 women, you know, they uh, men break them down, they hurt them, you know, they feel the type of way, they they're in their emotions or whatever, and then you know, finally get that little that little thing in their head, you know, it's like. And, you know, bitch. You know, you know who I am. You know what I'm saying? Like, you know, like, you know, you know, you know, you know. Yeah, I, I, I almost forgot who the fuck I was. You know, like, <laughs> you know, for so you know, one, one, one of the, um, one of the hardest things about doing um, uh, care package 
was that it's not the poetry in itself it's that i'm trying to write in the space that i'm talking as a female and as a male mm. you know from both instances of it you know because i wanted everybody i don't want to just speak for me you know as a because everybody don't relate to that you know yeah. so i try to hit both both essences of it and uh you know things like that you know i i know like it's just short but it's like it's short but it hits it's like you know what i went through that you know what I'm saying? that motherfucker had me fucked up you know like <laughs> that's so good i love that one but yeah this is great i'm really excited to um dig into this i'm gonna get myself a copy if you guys are wondering where to get um uh, anthony's uh books uh you can find them on amazon or hey just hit them up you know what i mean um he he's a self-published Spoken word artist and uh, care package is actually his first uh, poetry book, so definitely go check that out. I'm actually uh, surprised to hear that this just came out. So this is brand new. If one person would have bought it, I'd have been happy. Like I tell people, it didn't cost me anything but my my sweat equity for real to put yeah. the book out. You know, so um, you know I was. I like that sweat. Equity. Yeah, sweat equity. You know, and um, you know, it's just a, to me, it's just a good accomplishment for me. You know, I did it. Um, care package. The reason I put a care package is because. At the end of Am I Really, I put, you know, that's when I was really starting to get into my poetry, like my stride, and then, you know, like I'm, you know, I'm out here, you know, I'm really doing shows, I'm really doing yeah. this, whatever. Um, my name is really starting to get out there a little bit. So I was like, you know, let me put, let me give some teasers out here. So I put like 10, 10 or 12 short poems in the back of um, Am I Really? And then that just, people was like, man, you should start thinking about a poetry yeah. book. And I'm just like, I don't really want to write another book, you know, <laughs> whatever. And then, but you know, the more I, the more I was doing poetry, the more I would just sit and just write stuff yeah. and whatever. I was like, you know what? Writing poetry is a lot easier than writing a book, you know. So for me, you know, I, I just had so much material, and really that book was going to be a lot longer. But I wanted to stay true to what I said the topics covered, you know. So I so I compressed it. But um, I'm actually working on my next poetry book right now. It's called Men Cry. Awesome. Yeah. That was gonna be my next <laughs> yeah. Yeah, so I'm working on my next book right now. It's called Men Cry. Um, so yeah, um, it's a it's really it's really a poetry book based off of just men and dealing with our emotions. You know, so um, I think it's really important in the landscape that we have right now uh, for men to understand that you know it's it's cool to have feelings. It's cool. To, it's not it don't make you weak. It don't make you anything. You know, because we we have emotions. So um, there's certain parts of it that's aggressive. There's certain parts of it that's just you know sad and emotional. You can feel the pain. There's stuff in there about men dealing with breakups and you know stuff like that um that we go through so yeah men cry yeah mm -hmm. i'm excited to see how yeah. you lay that out yep yep um where can we find that when it's ready it'll be on amazon too it's not out yet um i'm still i'm still working it i'm, I'm looking at probably a late summer release for that one i'll probably be done constructing everything here within the next few weeks to a month but probably a late summer release is what i'm looking at for that right book on. so that's not mm -hmm. long at all yeah you heard it from the man himself go check out his books on amazon so we have a uh, care package am i really um when i checked i think they went for about 20 bucks each. yeah so care package goes for 20 am i really goes for 15 so yeah mm -hmm. right on and um you can find his next book men cry on amazon as well when that comes out and we'll get that to you guys whenever it does um so just a few quick things that i want to hit just so that we uh make sure we're advertising you properly you do uh, any other nonprofit work Nonprofit, like uh, so um escalation by ant that's uh that's my that's my line you know what i've done out here you know usually during the holidays we try to do different things for like the homeless um little food drives little back to school drives whatever just to get stuff out to the community and whatnot um when i leave here i'll probably take that with me and do it at my next location too um so yeah escalation by ant that's uh that's the brand that i usually do that stuff under uh, when I do any nonprofit stuff or whatever, I don't usually do it under my name. It's you, Escalation cool. by it's my so brand. It's so through, it's through Escalation by Ant that you uh, that you those that those food drives happen. Mm -hmm. Yep. So you know we usually will do we'll try to do some fundraisers and whatnot. Um, when we did our last, um, I did my last uh, holiday um, homeless walk. Um, we provided everything. We didn't even do a uh, we didn't even do a fundraiser. So all the funds came out of me and some of my friends' pockets, and we just did like little goodie bags where awesome. you know we gave them you know little stuff, you know little toiletries, and um, try to give them a little bit of food, you know that we could we can that they could eat. Right now. You know we it wasn't like a whole lot of money because it just came out of us, but something that they could have, you know, right then that they could use hopefully for the next few weeks or whatnot. Um, try to give them like ten dollars each, so they go get them a little meal or whatever. So we yeah. gave out. Probably about 
150, 150 of those goodie bags. So it, it was cool, you know, I, I enjoy doing things of that nature. Um, recent, during, during COVID actually, uh, me and one of my friends, I, uh, we actually been, because of the landscape and a lot of people, especially single parents and whatnot, have struggled and you know, like, um, you know, it's not about the money for me, honestly. Honestly, if I, if I could, I would just sell, give them for free, honestly. Um, but I but I do want to be able to share, you know, some of my profits you with other people. You know. you right, you know. Uh, <laughs> but I do want to be able to share some of the profits that I make with, you know, with causes that I believe in and um, yeah. things that that help that help people out. So uh, it's been awesome, you know, in that aspect, you know. So yeah, man, and your and your your shirts are definitely fashion forward. So yeah, uh, <laughs> where, can, where can they get that? In, uh, uh, if they, con they contact me through Instagram, I, I shoot the website, so I'm still working on certain things right now. So a lot of stuff I'm selling just through my through, through my social media. Awesome. Um, so I mean, I do. I do, do t-shirts. So it started out as a swimwear line first. So I have a swimwear line called Escalation by Ant. Um, that's cool. how I started out, um, men's and women's. Um, but uh, my t-shirts, I do t-shirts, short sleeve, long sleeve, leggings, phone cases, playing cards, water all. bottles, you know, all that. So yep, right uh, if, they, if, they, if they want, if they're interested, uh, they can go on my page, uh, Chico underscore Suave15 on Instagram, or just go follow the Escalation by Ant page on Instagram as well too. And you'll see some of my shirts or some of my merchandise as well too, and just contact me and we'll get you all ordered up and stuff. So. Aloha fam, it's your boy Christian the Sinner, and I just wanted to personally thank you guys for tuning into this episode of The Factory Features. If you're a spoken word artist like Anthony, like this video and leave a comment below to let him know what you thought about any of the topics that we talked about tonight. Don't forget to tag a friend and some artists that you want to see on our show. And share this video to show some love to our team. Mahalo.